Hello again, uh, it's Paul Beckwith. I'm back and um, this time I'm showing the uh, GFS model runs um, for the entire globe um, when it's projected onto a two-dimensional screen. Um, so again we've got the jets um, scene and you can see you know how incredibly spirally and looped they become um, with pieces breaking off. Now you have to remember that um, in the in the more usual in the more in a normal system or what we're what we're familiar with is you have of course warmer air um, close to the equator and spreading out and then you have um, these jets um, basically separating the warmer air from the colder air that is poleward on either side of the jet. Um, and uh, when you get a wavy area like this, um, then the warmer air can extend further north. And when you get a trough like this, so this is a ridge, a ridge here. When you get a trough like this, then the colder air can extend down further south. And then as these go by a fixed point on the earth, uh, you can transition from very warm temperatures to very cold temperatures back to very warm temperatures like a like a seesaw pattern and that can happen very quickly um, as these waves become more uh, larger amplitude in the north-south direction and as they as they narrow up if they narrow up then um, you know as they move along um, you can get very very rapid changes in, in, in temperature. Um, and uh, over here um, I have the this is the temperature um, in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit synchronized to the jet streams and those loops that you can see on the jet streams you can see that there's changes large changes um, in many different locations um, the reds here you know, these, the, the, those are 30 degrees Celsius plus, and then it goes down to the yellows is 20 degrees and so on. So you get these fluctuations, um, they're occurring, again, every update is three hours. Um, you expect some changes as you proceed um, from, uh, light, from, from day to night, back to day and so on. Um, you can also see, uh, you know, the, the cold air air that's sitting over over uh, North America here and also over Asia here. Um, now this is the temperatures and the um, I want to show you the temperature anomalies now so I'll come over to here and this is basically the temperature anomalies now so you can see um, the the minus 20 um, the minus 20 degree temperatures swinging over North America here. Look at the contrast here. 20 degrees um, Celsius, 15 to 20 degrees Celsius below the norm. Um, and then over in Florida, you know, you're looking at uh, temperatures 10 degrees Celsius um, above the norm. And when you have very cold temperatures, and very warm temperatures in close proximity that generates a large pressure gradient which generates uh, very very high winds and uh, very stormy activity. Um, now if we go back over here okay uh, let's see get my bearings here um, this is Cairo this is Egypt right up here um, hope my geography is right Cairo is in northern Egypt so you can see what's happening there the temperature is varying um, from below uh, below zero minus five degrees or so up to uh, um, positive temperatures um, there's fluctuations there was snow there recently um, if you go over here that's about 30 degrees north um, if you go even further south over here um, in uh, Vietnam Okay, you can see, look at these anomalies coming in here. Okay, these anomalies, um, very low. Um, there were some purples here, you know, 10, 15 degrees below normal. Um, 
you'd have to go back to the absolute temperature um, map to see whether that was going below zero. Um, and then uh, Laos, where they had that 120 millimeters of, or centimeters of rain in one 24 hour period is down in this region. But you can see um, that, I mean, this is not a pretty picture. Um, these, uh, with the jet stream so fractured, um, you're getting, it's almost like the, the standard patterns um, of the atmosphere that we're used to are fracturing are fragmenting uh, very, very quickly. And as I said before, and I want to reinforce it, um, if you have warm air moving northwards because of um, wavy jets, um, that's carrying a lot of heat um, into the polar, the Arctic region. If you have cold air from the Arctic region propagating very far south, then in effect, that's putting Heat. It's taking cold away from the polar region, which is effectively adding heat to the polar region. So the warm mixing of air there is in the in the meridional north, which is a north-south direction, the the more um, the the more um, uniform the temperature starts to become in the northern hemisphere. So if you carry this um, logic forward, and you know it, it is it does seem to be the sea ice and snow cover that is messing up the jets and then leading to the initial um, bending and waviness of the jets and then the mixing of the air is carrying the process even further so if you carry this to the you know extreme then you can imagine that these processes could possibly lead to quite a homogeneous um, temperature across the northern hemisphere with very little latitudinal gradient um, of course it's always going to be the, the, the solar angle is much higher at the equator. As you go north, it, um, you're getting much less heating, um, direct heating from the sun, but um, the circulation can try to mix. So th there's a tug of war here between the normal pattern set up by the solar variation with latitude and the, um, the mixing. So I'll, I'll, I'll end um, here, keep these videos a bit shorter. Thank you.